ಸಾಷ್ಟಮತ್ರೇರಪತ್ಯಂ ಅಪಿಯತ್ತವಂ ವೃತ ಪ್ರಾಪ್ತೋನಸೂಯ ಅನ್ವೀಕ್ಷಿ ಲಲಾರಕಾಯ ಪ್ರಹ್ಲಾದಿಯಭಿಯಚಿವಂ ಟ್ರಾನ್ಸ್ಲೇಷನ್ ಅಂಡ್ ಪರ್ಪಡ್ ಬೈ ಹಿಸ್ ಡಿವೈನ್ ಗ್ರೇಸ್ ಎ ಸಿ ಭಕ್ತಿ ವೇದಾಂತ ಸ್ವಾಮಿ ಶಿಲ ಪ್ರಭುಪಾದ ಶಿಲ ಪ್ರಭುಪಾದ ಕಿ ಜಾಯ್ ಟ್ರಾನ್ಸ್ಲೇಷನ್ the sixth incarnation of the purusha was the son of age atri he was born from the womb of anasuya who prayed for an incarnation he spoke on the subject of transcendence to alarka prahlad and others yadu hayya etc purport the lord incarnated himself as datatreya the son of rishi atri and anasuya the history of the birth of datatreya as an incarnation of the lord is mentioned in the brahmanda puran in connection with the story of the devoted wife it is said there that anasuya the wife of rishi atri prayed before the lords of brahma vishnu and shiva as follows my lords if you are pleased with me and if you desire me to ask from you some sort of blessing then i pray that you combine together to become my son this was accepted by the lords and as datatreya the lord expanded the philosophy of the spirit soul and specially instructed alarka prahlad yadu ahi hai haya etc so such a wonderful section of bhagavatam we are in this is the third chapter of shrimad bhagavatam entitled krishna is the source of all um, incarnations so here we see um, this is a section where the various starting from the text 6 in this chapter all the way to text 27 the 22 incarnations of krishna are been explained and how they appear and who do they appear and some details are given of those incarnations here actually so right at the beginning of the bhagavatam the very uh, fact has been established that krishna is actually the source ete cham kala pumsam krishna stu bhagavan swayam so right at the beginning of the bhagavatam it has been very firmly presented that krishna is the source of all incarnations and uh, in particular uh, text you will see the story reference has been given and, and the purport prabhupad gives a very concise purport and uh, the great scientist chandra uh, chetanya charan prabhu he explains that the reason in some of these incarnation prabhupad doesn't go into the detail all the actually not so much prabhupad is because parikshit maharaj only had 7 days to live and uh, there was a sense of urgency for sukhdev goswami to recite the entire bhagavatam in the 7 days so you can imagine how much could he have covered if he had gone into the brahmanda puran story now of, of datatreya and anasuya and how datatreya was had appeared actually so that's one reason one may ask the question somebody asked this question to prabhu and prabhu answered in in that way as keeping that essence that krishna's main incarnations were were covered and and the details were given but the main emphasis is on the bhakti the the devotion service aspect so i found a very beautiful transcript of a lecture prabhupad gave on this particular text in 12 and we will read that transcript and discuss have a discussion um on that transcript of shila prabhupad in over the next sort of 20 25 minutes um and and derive some lessons some instructions and some um yeah i mean some great words of inspiration from shila prabhupad purport before that i like to offer my obeisances <coughs> to our spiritual master and seek their blessings to be able to discuss and and speak something on this subject matter om gyana timirandasya gyanan jana shalakaya chakshurun militam yena tasmay shri guruve namaha shri chaitanya manobhishtam stapitam yena bhutale sayam rupa kadamayam dadati swapadantikam vande ham shri guru shri yuta padakamalam shri gurun vaishnavanam cha shri rupam sagrajatam sahagana ragunatan vitam tam sajivam sadvaitam savadutam parijana sahitam krishna chaitanya devam shri radha krishna padan sahagana lalita shri vishakan vitam cha 
नमो विष्णुपय कृष्ण पृष्ठा भूतले श्रीमते भक्ति वेदाता स्वामी नामिने नमस्ते सरस्वती देव गौरवाणी प्रचारिणे निर्विशेष शून्यवादी पाश्चात देशता विने नमो ओं विष्णु पदा कृष्ण पृष्ठा भूतले श्रीमते भक्ति सिद्धांता सरस्वती नामिने श्री वर्षवाभान वैदेवी दायिते कृपात कृष्ण संबंध विज्ञान दायिने प्रभाव नम माधुर्यज्वला प्रेमा श्री रूपनुगा भक्त श्री गौरकिशोरा शक्ति विग्रा नमस्तुते नमस्ते गौरवाणी श्री मूर्ताए दीन तारिणे रूपनुगा विरुधा पाशादीनाधारिणे नमो गौर किशोरा साक्षात वैराग्य मूर्त विप्रलंबा रशंबो रसंबोधे पदम भूजाए नम नमो भक्ति विनोदा सचिदनंदना गौर शक्ति स्वूपाया <coughs> गौर शक्ति स्वूपाया रूपनुगा वराय ते गौर वैरभ भूमिस्व निर्देश सह जना प्रिया वैष्णवा सर्वभूम श्री जगन्नाथाए ते नम पंचकूभ्य कृपा सिंधु पतिता पावनेभ्यो वैष्णवेभ्यो नमो नम नमो महावदन्याय कृष्ण प्रेम प्रदाते कृष्णाय कृष्ण चैतन्यामने गौरा तुषे नम पंच तत्व कृष्ण भक्त स्वूपक भक्त अवतार भक्ताख्यम नमा भक्त शक्ति हे कृष्ण करुण सिंधु दीन बंधु जगत्पते गोपेश गोपिका कांता राधकांता नमस्तुते जय तम शुरुतुर्पंगो नमो मंदा मतिर्गति मत्सर्वशपदम भोजे राधा मदन मोहनो तप्त कांचन गौरंगी राधे वृंदावनेश्वरी वृषभानुसुते देवी प्रणमा हरि प्रिय पंचकूभ्य कृपा सिंधु पतिता पावनेभ्यो वैष्णवेभ्यो नमो नम जय श्री कृष्ण चैतन्य प्रभु निनंद श्री अद्वैत गाधर शिव सादि गौर भक्त वृंद हरे कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा कृष्ण कृष्णा हरे 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 रामा हरे रामा राम रामा हरे हरे सो थैंक यू सो मच डियर डिवोटीज फॉर असेंबलिंग हियर ऑन दिस जूम प्लेटफॉर्म टू डिस्कस श्रीमद भागवतम व्हिच इज कंसीडर्ड टू बी द टॉप मोस्ट सब्जेक्ट मैटर व्हिच इज वर्थ डिस्कसिंग वर्थ डिबेटिंग वर्थ क्वेश्चनिंग एंड वर्थ आंसरिंग um it's it's the conversation which is the essence of all conversations actually delivered here in front of our own eyes in the form of this beautiful bhagavat puran called shrimad bhagavatam which is a spotless puran so in this particular text prabhupada gives a lecture in los angeles on september 17 in 1972 and i thought let's just take prabhupada's words as it is and discuss them today prabhupada asked pradyumna prabhu to recite this first then the translation let's read it again the sixth incarnation of the purusha was the son of the sage atri he was born in the womb of anasuya who prayed for an incarnation he spoke on the subject of transcendence to alarka pralad and others yadu hayya etc so here prabhupada gives the lecture and in the big right at the beginning prabhupada is saying the lord incarnated himself as datatriya the son of rishi atri anasuya the history of the birth of datriya as an incarnation of the lord is mentioned in brahma purana so this is the purport and then prabhupad gives the class on this saying here we can see that you have the god as your own son and prabhupad goes on to explain the philosophy various kinds of philosophy propagated and how shri chaitanya mahaprabhu is given the topmost of all the philosophies so here prabhupad says so this is better philosophy than to accept god, than to accept god as father that is especially in the vaishnava philosophy so what prabhupad is saying this is the best philosophy not compared to not accept god but to accept him as a father that's what prabhupada is you know when you're transcribing sometimes it doesn't come across so what prabhupada is saying is much better to have god as your father as your son whatever your aspiration may be like bhagavatam says right in the first canto akama sarva kamo va moksha kama udarite divrena bhakti yogena 
yajate purusham param that oh my dear friend whatever your desire may be whether you desire kama you know some sense gratification or whether you desire moksha or liberation akama sarva kamo va or you desire anything else for that matter please approach the supreme personality of godhead because by doing so you are setting a precedent and you are coming to consensus by accepting the fact that you have faith in the scriptures because scriptures proclaim that krishna is swayam bhagavan so because you have that understanding and with that understanding you are coming to the lord then that is in the beginning sufficient in itself to start the process of purification of our heart cheto darpanam marjanam bhava mahatvagani nirvapanam sherva kairva chandrika vitranam vidyavadu jivanam anandam budivardanam pratipadam purnam itasvadanam sarvatnam snapanam param vijayate shri krishna sankirtanam so just in the beginning that all that is all we need to do so here prabhupada is saying that especially in the vaishnava philosophy you will not find it in the impersonalist in the voidism Prabhupada gives a very important. He said they have no conception of God voidist. Ultimately, everything is zero. And the imp- impersonalist, God has no form. Both are the same thing in a different language. The voidist say they ultimately there is nothing but zero, and the impersonalist statement that maybe something, but it is not person. So both the philosophy are null and void. You know, it's complete nonsense. As Prabhupada says, therefore, in the Padma Puran, this Buddhist theory, voidism, and the Sankarshara theory of impersonalism, they are taken as one and the same. And then here Prabhupada explains that according to the Vedic line of thought, anyone who does not accept the authority of the Veda is called atheist. So look, what a beautiful definition of somebody who is an atheist. And who is a theist? Theist is somebody who believes in the Veda. But an atheist is someone who has no faith in the Vedas. And so Prabhupada gives a different example. So nice for preaching. I thought, you know, let me just share it with all of you as it is rather than me trying to, you know, hear that lecture and then speak but i thought it's nice Prabhupada's words are there and here Prabhupada is saying so according to our vedic line anyone who does not accept the vedic way of life is called atheist therefore buddhist according to the vedantis buddhists are called atheists why actually buddha philosophy does not accept god neither soul they simply philosophy on the material elements and they want to finish the material existence dismantle the material elements nirvana So Chaitanya Mahaprabhu has remarked that the Buddhists are honest. So at least they are honest because they deride the Vedas. And what they say, they frankly say that we don't accept the Vedas. But the Shankarites, they are cheaters because they accept the Vedas, but on the basis of Buddhist philosophy. Do you see? This is such a fundamental point. You see, when we operate, when we live in the Pasha Desh, we are living in a Pasha Desh right now. And here, most people you will meet, unfortunately, you will either find them atheists, but those atheists are of what kind? Either they believe in voidism or they believe in impersonalism. That is why Srila Prabhupada, as our founder Acharya in his Pranam Mantra, what does it have? Nama Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prashtaya Bhutale Srimate Bhakti Vedanta Swami Iti Namine Namaste Sarsati Deve Gauravani Pracharine Nirvishesha Nirvishesha Shunyavadi Pashyat Deshatarine so both, you know, Prabhupada is trying with his mercy, with the knowledge, with the faith in the spiritual master, with the faith in the holy name, he's trying to deliver us and everybody with this voidism and impersonalism. This is the biggest fear one should be afraid of in life, not the fear of death, but actually the fear of being impersonalist. Because for somebody who's an impersonalist, unfortunately, his destination is not glorious in the next life. So something very clear, very, very important for us to keep in mind that we are so 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 fortunate we are coming in the line of Sri Sri Gaudiya Madhav Sampradaya especially delineated in the line of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu headed by Srila Rupa Goswami, Sanatan Goswami and all the other four Goswamis along with the two Goswamis that we have been delivered this best kind of Siddhanta there is no Siddhanta which is as highest as pure as sublime as truth truthful than then then Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's philosophy on, on, on this aspect of Abheda Abheda Tatva. He he reconciles the both the aspects of the Lord very, very beautifully. And here you see Prabhupada mentions that 
there are many conceptions of god but there is a conception of god to accept god as a son that is only in vaishnav philosophy because we are eternal servants of god that is our philosophy jivera swarup hoy krishnera nitya das it's explained in the madhya leela that the living entity has his real constitutional position to serve god we have several times explained this fact that the part and the parcel of god must be engaged in the service of god just like this finger is part and parcel of my body it is a duty to serve the body it has no other duty the finger cannot go elsewhere and serve something else it must serve my body therefore it is part and parcel similarly i am also part and parcel what a beautiful example another analogy shila prabhupad gives us in different places that just like there is a a screw it it has a value as long as it is attached in the machine the moment you take the screw out of the machine unfortunately it loses all its value so similarly as ब्रह्मांडे भ्रमित कौन भाग्यवान जी गुरु कृष्ण प्रसादे पाए भक्ति लता बीज दैट फॉर फॉर टाइम इमेमोरियल ब्रह्मांडे भ्रमित फॉर सच अ लॉन्ग टाइम वी आर भ्रमित वी आर गोइंग वन प्लेस टू अनदर नॉन स्टॉप वी आर चेंजिंग द बॉडीज बट समहाउ और अदर बाय द मर्सी ऑफ स्पिरिचुअल मास्टर्स एंड द मर्सी ऑफ कृष्णा वी हैव कम where now we have been given this bhakti lata beej and who is the gardener swayam shri chaitanya mahaprabhu shri krishna chaitanya mahaprabhu bhagwan is the gardener of that seed who is actually helping us helping us telling us what are the seed with the hearing and chanting of the hare krishna hare krishna 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 hare 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 ram hare ram 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 hare hare reading bhagavatam living in mathura worshiping the deities associating with the vaishnavas or was the fifth deity worship by at least having some taste if not to the all five even if it is to one of them then our life can be perfect this panchanga bhakti is so so important for us and then prabhupad in the next paragraph goes on to explain that you have seen the picture on or in nectar of devotion like how there there are krishna's friends sitting krishna is eating somebody is fanning him somebody is doing something nice to him and every day they go to the forest and they see one demon is killed by krishna and they become very much devoted i have been reading shrimad bhagavatam 10th canto these days and i'm so awestruck by the mood of the various devotees recently i've been reading me shri dam sachi and vindarika ramaya that how in the 10th canto you see udhava goes to meet the gopis goes to meet the nanda baba yashoda maiya there he is received in such beautiful way by nand maharaj and not only that just received i mean we received the guest but there nand maharaj receives him he gets somebody to wash his feet he makes him rest then he gives him nice opulent prasadam and then he inquires that how is my nand how is my lal how is my krishna and just as this is nand maharaj asking um um asking uddhava Uddhava, thank you so much, Palika Mataji. He's asking um, Uddhava that how is Krishna faring? Does he think of us, or is he too busy um, uh, there? And just as he is talking, just by that conversation, Mother Yashoda has not even had the opportunity to come and interact with, with Uddhava. Just as then that conversation is going on, you can see Mother Yashoda's breast breast starts to overflow with the milk. tears are pouring from her eyes she is in complete ecstasy thinking of her lala actually and and that whole atmosphere becomes so so surcharged that one can just imagine what would be like in the association of such exalted devotees and just then the gopis arrive and they take away udhava from the assembly after he finishes with nand maharaj and yashoda maiya they take him to the side and then they inquire from him you know and 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 it is such a beautiful it's one cha- i mean there are few chapters but this particular chapter is one place where our acharyas like shila vishwanath chakravarti thakur shila shridhar goswami pad they all explain so very beautifully that although sukhdev goswami couldn't dare to speak about shrimati radharani directly but they elaborate that it is actually one one devotee the pure devotee of the lord shrimati radharani among all the gopis who speaks at length and and that chapter is called the the the, the song of the bee and in 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 this in those verses there is a beautiful description of shrimati radharani's affection for krishna but i rather stay where 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 i am at, at a very uh, menial level in in the practice of krishna consciousness so suffice to say there it is been 
you can see with the glimpse of those beautiful pastimes that so much of love is carried, so much of bhav is there in Vrindavan, so much of affection is there for 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 for, for our Kanahiya, you know, for Krishna, and and the devotees, and and that is that is the topmost philosophy, ladies and gentlemen. You will not find such rasa. That is why when we go to Vrindavan. You know, when we hear these pastimes, when we read Srimad Bhagavatam in the association of the devotees, it just brings about a whole whole lot of revolution in our in our in our mind and consciousness. Just yesterday, I was we, I was having a call with my spiritual master. We were discussing some of the trips, and I I was requesting Guru Maharaj to come and give us his association. And it's a breath he has taken for his at least for for many years. This is this will be the 20th year for 19 years. He and Kesha Bharti Maharaj they go to Govardhan, they lock themselves in a very tiny room, which is about not even half, less than half, a quarter of the size of this uh, loft room of ours. And around 15 to 20 brahmacharis get crammed in, and few others who stay outside uh, with the, sometimes the other. The, they, they use a little speaker, and and they recite Sriman Bhagavatam they, for five hours a day. And 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 when you walk out of the room, or if you attend the whole, I mean, we have never had a chance to attend whole month, but at least two weeks, we attend one of the session. But I can tell you that session keeps us going for the rest of our year, actually. So I was begging my spiritual master that we are coming with some devotees to Vrindavan. That kindly, if he if he could somehow give us his association for a few days from that wrath, and he very nicely and happily agreed. So I'm very happy to share with those who are coming. Um, we will have few days of association for Guru Maharaj, and we will be going to a few places with him. And then there'll be a few other devotees who will hear. But the point is, you see, going to Vrindavan is is not just going. We can't anything see physically. It's it's hearing from the sadhu is what brings Vrindavan in our heart, and that's what we need right now more than anything because we can't see. We do not have the eyes to see Vrindavan. We do not have eyes to see the see this pastimes. But when we hear from the devotees of the Lord. In that Pavan Bhumi of Vrindavan, then then you know it takes our Krishna consciousness to the, to the next level completely. And what to speak of when it is done in the month of Kartik? You know, uh, there may be very anomalies, there may be many difficulties, there will be many people. It will not be easy to move around, especially if it, with a group of ours. But but it's worth taking all those risks. It's worth taking all those hardships. It's worth taking all the difficulties we are taking even while we are here to sit and hear these wonderful pastimes of the Lord and come to such perfection. Look what Prabhupada is saying. They did not know, even the Mother Yashoda and Nanda Maharaj, all the inhabitants of Vrindavan, they did not know that they, they neither they cared to know whether Krishna is God. They simply loved Krishna without any identification. We are worshipping God Krishna because we are imprisoned. Palika Mataji, could you read this paragraph since uh, you're, I can see you on the screen. From here, we are worshipping God Krishna because we are impressed. You're on mute. <coughs> yeah. yeah, thank you. Hare Krishna, thank you. We are worshipping Lord Krishna because we are impressed with so many things. That Krishna is the Supreme Lord. He is the absolute truth. And therefore, we are a little inclined or right. Uh, Ah, all right, let us serve Krishna. If he is God, you see, there is some condition. If Krishna is God, so if I do not love, if I do not worship, there may be something wrong. So that is business. But amongst the gopis and the cowherd boy, the Vrindavan inhabitants, there is no business. We all love Krishna unconditionally. That's all. We do not know anything except Krishna. This is Vrindavan atmosphere. Wonderful. Sorry. Anybody else like to read the next paragraph? I can read Prabhu. Where is it starting from? Bhagavati Mataji. So, Mother Yashoda, Nanda, and other elderly gopis. Hare Krishna, everyone. So Mother Yashoda, Nanda, and other elderly gopis, they used to Krishna as son and beloved son because if we accept God as father or mother, there is conception of mother also. The Saktas, there are many devotees of Durga Kali. They also accept the mother. The Christian accept as father. The conception of father and mother, that is good, but there is little, little service. 
because children, they take service from the mother and father. They give rendered very little service to the father and mother. Every children, every man, every woman has taken so much service from the father and mother. Everyone knows that just like those who are mothers here, how much service they are giving to the little children, how much careful they are that their child might may not be in some difficulty, always anxious. Similarly, this philosophy to accept God as son means opportunity for rendering more service than to accept God as father. Thank you, Bhagavati Mataji. Very beautiful. So, dear devotees, our line, our conception, our process is the process of serving the Lord, serving his devotees, serving his dham, serving everything which is related to his, uh, uh, yeah, all his parapan paraphernalia is worshipable actually uh, however for the brajavasis you know krishna was never a god you know he they, they always loved him as 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 he is as krishna so let's read another paragraph here who would like to read the next one god is neither father nor he's a father actually he's a father because he's the origin of everything can i read prabhu yes go ahead krishna Vani Mataji. you can start from janma the uh, yeah. body is Okay, Srimad Bhagavatam 111. Krishna also says, Aham Bija Prada Pita. Bhagavad Gita 14.4. Pita means father. So actually, God's position is father. He is father of everything. Not all living entities, all material energy. As if you discover something, it is called the father of this scientific discovery. So he has discovered everything, material and spiritual both. Therefore, he is original father of everyone. Not only of the living entities, but also stones, wood, earth, water, fire, everything. He has created Bhumir Apo Analo Vayu Kam Mano Budir Evacha. Then prakruti, prakruti me astada, binna prakruti me astada, BG 7.4, in the Bhagavad Gita. So he has created everything. He is actually the father, but out of love, the devotees, they accept the father as son to give more service. Father is obliged to give service to the son. He has given birth. Therefore, he has obligation to maintain the son to give service. Thank you, Vataji. So here, if you accept God as son, then you cannot avoid the obligation of service. In other way, you can avoid. This is compulsory. Therefore, sometimes devotees, they pray. Here it is said, prayed for. The sixth incarnation of Purusha was the son of the sage Atri. He was born in the womb of Anasuya, who prayed for an incarnation. She requested that you all three, you become my son. And now Prabhupada goes on to the next verse and then gives a class on to the next verse. And look how timely we finish. It's 8.30. You see, Srila Prabhupada, you can just see he was so much living in Vrindavan. So, so much living in Vrindavan. You know, his heart was in Vrindavan. All the time he was thinking of Vrindavan. He was meditating on Vrindavan. So many purports in Bhagavatam we hear these pastimes. He takes takes us back into that journey of the gopis, takes us back into the journey of what Mother Sh Yashoda is thinking. Because that is where Prabhupada wants to is it wants to literally take us. Because that is where Srila Prabhupada is situated in the Golok Vrindavan Dham. And he's trying to remind us that this is not the place for us. The place for us is Golok Vrindavan Dham. But while this place is there, the best we can do is seva. Our seva will save us. There is no other means of uh, saving us in this world. And the way to serve the Lord is, is just following the instruction of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, which he gave many. But the essence of all those instructions were two things. What was the first one? The first one was chant Hare Krishna. And the second one was to teach others. So if we can somehow or other mold our life around these two principles, everybody can unmute for a minute. And just repeat after me. Chant Hare Krishna. Chant Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Okay, let's try everybody together at the count of three. I'll say and then you repeat. Chant Hare Krishna. Chant Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. I didn't count till three. So that was my mistake. Let's do it again. One, two, three. Chant Hare Krishna. Chant Hare Krishna. Chant Hare Krishna. Let's do the other one now at the count of three. One, two, three. Teach others. 
Teach others. I can see the voice echoing. Wonderful. Let me mute everybody. So chant Hare Krishna and teach others. These were the two instructions Mahaprabhu has left us. And they aren't so difficult. Can you, Prabhuji. can you not hear me, Hare Krishna? Yes, we can. Okay, yes, thank you, Prashma Mataji. So I was saying that they are not very difficult instructions. You just chant Hare Krishna and you teach others. Jare deke tare kahe Krishna Upades. Wherever you go, whatever you do, carry a little book of Prabhupada, carry a Mahamantra card, carry a little prashadam. You never know who you're going to meet or you want to deliberately meet somebody and tell them about Krishna, introduce them to Srimad Bhagavatam. This year, my dear friends, we have to distribute at least 600 Bhagavatam sets in order to make some difference to this earth, which is going through a turmoil with so many difficult things happening. So much of sins are being enacted by the various people of the world and the world is going through a turmoil right now. If there is anything which can save is the transcendental vibration of Srimad Bhagavatam. And if you think of it, it may sound a very big number, but if you look at the population of England, which is about 60.8 million people, then 600 Bhagavatam set is not even 0.0.0.1 of that actually. So uh, at least we can do is, is give it a try. And, and one of the things I have been meditating of the 600 sets is that I will come up with a number soon with the team, with a discussion with the team, but we are hoping to at least try and visit 300 homes, like to bring 300 Bhagavatams in the home and three, do 300 installation ceremonies between now and the Bhadra Purnima. Let's take Bhagavatam into the houses of the people. So if you know your friends, please note it down their numbers. Please talk to them. Tell them about Bhagavatam. Tell them about the installation ceremony. Reach out to me and we're going to have a team of devotees and we will come to your houses, to your friends' houses and we will do the installation of the Bhagavatams in their house. And we will connect them through Chat Plus and other programs so they can also progress in Krishna consciousness. So that is the idea this year. So please start meditating because that's what Prabhupada did. He took him years to take sannyas, although his spiritual master was already coming in his dream and telling him take sannyas, but Prabhupada couldn't do it immediately. He could not immediately fulfill the mission of his spiritual master, Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasati Thakur. It took him a while and then he was able to do it. So, yeah, there is there is a you know great opportunity at our hand to do something for this movement of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And, and become an instrument and become recognized by Chaitanya Mahaprabhu for being his warriors, for spreading something which was so dear to him, Srimad Bhagavatam. And you all are the wonderful students of Bhagavatam. It is our duty now to try and spread this as we ourselves start to read and, and practice and live and distribute Srimad Bhagavatam to others. So on that note, I will stop here and take any reflections, any comments, any questions you may have from a session which we covered today. Hare Krishna Dipanam Prabhu, wonderful, wonderful. You pick up the very nice lecture. And okay. also, you know, at the beginning, what you say that I used to, I used to think whenever Srila Prabhupada, I couldn't quite connect. You know, if the finger is not serving the body, then it's no, you know, it's no point mm. of So exactly like, you know, we are the part and parcel of Krishna. If we can't serve Krishna, What's the point of having this body? I was very connected with that, and it's really wonderful. And you chosen the very nice lecture of Srila Prabhupada. And I also remember when I we, we went to Vindavan and Jagannathpuri during the karting time, and the you know, whole day we go and places is such a wonderful, and then in the evening we come together and Maharaj is giving just such a wonderful you know nectar. And mm. really I Really, really wonderfully, you know, enjoy it thoroughly. Those, those wonderful. You're living in Vrindavan, I, I can already see Palikamadaji. You have that consciousness all the time, which is nice. How's I your health I... now? Your health is okay. I'm just managing by Krishna's mercy. Wow. I would like to, I like to be involved in this, you know, Bhadra, you know, Bhadra campaign. Definitely, I'm, I'm my heart always bleed. You know, I want to give all my money. Put Bhagavatam to every house. Chai. Amazing, Mataji. Next door neighbor, I asked. I said, "Can I do? You know, can I do something? Can I give it? Can I? Can I give it to you know, Bhagavatam?" Nice. And she said, "Oh, I'm not ready." And I was thinking, "Oh no." Nice. Very it's, nice. It's, 
really, you know, you feel, you feel the Bhagavatam is so much mm. without Bhagavatam knowledge of now we are studying Srimad Bhagavatam you know, and Bhakti Dai Yes. Just, you know, it's just amazing. If people knew what is in there, you know, they would definitely they they're so engrossed in the material world. It's just very yeah, sad. Very sad. Fun. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, Palika Mataji. Thank right. you so much. Hare Krishna. Yeah, this point you made is very uh, palpable because Prabhupada also makes, you know, this human body is done, made in such a way and, and if we do it, uh, use it properly, he gives another example that the way to feed our stomach is through the mouth. We take the morsel of food or prasadam with our hands and put it in the mouth and it goes. But if we try to take the food and put it through other holes which have been given in the body, it'll create a havoc. Um, and and that, wouldn't, that wouldn't be best on the body. So similarly, this body, human birth, body is being given and it needs to be utilized in the service of the Lord, actually. If we don't, then it'll create a havoc for, for our own um, activities sinful activities which we are carrying on and will carry on and have, having to then suffer those sins in the future lives or in this life in some cases. So thank you so much, Palika Mataji. Thank you. Anybody Great. else? Hare Krishna Prabhu. Delighted to see you. <laughs> Thank you, Prabhu. Yes, lovely session. Yes, we must uh, push for the Srimad Bhagavatam because now that has become our life and soul, isn't it? Absolutely, Prabhuji. Yeah. So, yes, so all of us, we have to individually make an effort somehow or other. And uh, through the various contexts that we have, I'm sure... We can make some progress. Thank you, Prabhu. Thank you so much, Prabhuji. Hare Krishna. That's really encouraging to hear that. Thank you. Anyone else would like to share a reflection or have any questions or comments? Hema Mataji is sharing with us, let's try and make Srimad Bhagavatam our best friend, best companion and best spiritual master, best deliverer, best wealth, best fortune and uh, best of everything. This is the prayers of Sanatan Goswami, which are being, which are glorifying Srimad Bhagavatam. Yes, that, that's how it should be. And anything which is so best, if it is our companion, we want to share it with the rest of the world, because why not? If you have something which is so sublime, and which is making a real difference in your life, why would you not share it with others? Because we are not, as but as, as per our original nature, we are not supposed to be selfish living entities. We are selfless living entities. That 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 is our nature, you know. As Jivera Sarup, Krishna and Nitya Das. If we are Krishna and Nitya Das, then we are also not just thinking of ourselves. We are also trying to think of others and how others can come closer to Krishna. So I, I pray to all of you that please, Keep praying to Bhagavatam that it allows us to go deeper and deeper because it's it's like an ocean, uh, and 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 the best of the jewels are right at the deep of the, you know in, in, down in in the ocean. So we need to keep reading, keep studying Srimad Bhagavatam, taking the association of devotees, uh, glorifying Bhagavatam. Especially if we get to go to the dham, read Bhagavatam as much as possible in the dham. It has a powerful effect, you know. Um, I just cannot, I just hope even if we get one session of that Bhagavatam in Vrindavan this year of reading with Kesha Bharati Maharaj, um, it would be amazing, you know, it, it'll just be amazing. So, yeah, just just take Bhagavatam and trying to give out Bhagavatam to as many people as possible, that'll be amazing. Thank you, Hema Mataji, for sharing that. Okay, devotees, if no one has any comments or questions, we can end here. And uh, I'd like to thank all of you for dedicating your life to Srila Prabhupada in, and the various other services you're rendering. Each one of you are a glorious soul in the army of Mahaprabhu, in the army of Srila Prabhupada. Prabhupada is seeing each one of you as, as a great warrior 
and and he often Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna. and he he's saying seeing you all as a great warrior in this army and i i'm remember i'm reminded of a time when Srila Prabhupada used to see his disciples and see them rendering so many services and Prabhupada would be say that you are all being sent by my Guru Maharaj he would give the credit to the devotees so taking the same you know mood of Srila Prabhupada I strongly feel that all the devotees who are coming to the International Society of Krishna Consciousness are getting to hear even a little bit about our movement our glorious souls and it is only a matter of a little time for those new ones to come in and, and start serving the mission of Prabhupada because this is our life and soul um, by sharing transcendental literature, the holy name with others and Krishna Prashadam, our life becomes sub sublime, dear friends. So please keep doing what you're doing and keep reading Prabhupada books, keep chanting the holy name as tightly as you can in the morning. And uh, yeah, keep the transcendental vibration going. Thank you everybody for coming in this evening. And we will see you all hopefully tomorrow evening in the association of Prayagraj Prabhu, another wonderful devotee who will have his association as a guest speaker tomorrow evening who will come and um, we'll continue Bhagavatam with him. Until then, please look after yourself and stay Krishna conscious. Yes, he's very good. He's very knowledgeable. Vancha kalpa tarubya shara 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 shara